Live from New York, it's the show that doesn't quite know what the Brooklyn Nets are doing. <laughs> I don't know if that Ben Simmons trade worked out. <laughs> nah, I don't know, but you know what? Ben was supposed to get busy this yeah, year. Yeah, you got. Tell you me. were trying to buy into Ben this year. I'm trying year. to be an optimist. Okay, well, you can't give that they to They said he was going to play in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. First things okay. first. He, could, he had to go right back. I, if, is that, if they were ahead, do you think he would go back and get treatment on his ankle? Is that the question we're asking? What are you trying to say, Wow? I'm just saying that he is the best, the absolute best person in the world at putting little Easter eggs out. <laughs> oh. That you're supposed to figure out. Like, hmm, interesting. He just leaves he like, I'm out of here. <laughs> we're losing. AD's not doing something. I don't agree with what Darvin Ham's doing with the lineups. Or his ankle hurts. Or all a combination. So what's uh-huh. the story? LeBron's injury or... The Lakers lost. Well, because like you, I don't think this is – I didn't see him writhing in pain like you saw Giannis, Giannis writhing, who, by the way, missed zero it's games. It's amazing. He played it's amazing. And then after a while, was talking was about okay. the devastating injuries. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's devastating. I'm saying – You, you talk like let's, he was going to be out for three months. It's an Achilles. Thank That's you. what you said. It's right. an Achilles. Let's say – Josh, I mean, can you get that data on Achilles? Big deal or no I, big deal? I can't it was believe I'm going that serious. Let's stay on topic. Uh, but because I don't think this was necessarily a devastating injury or ailment that LeBron's leave dealing the floor. with, I understand that. Uh, it's he definitely minutes. right. It's a, the bigger story is the Lakers' loss, bar none, and it was an awful loss. Awful. They they were up 17 in the first quarter, down 15 at I halftime. Think they were up 19. Okay, so up 19, 19 in the first quarter, down 15 at halftime. They and so. There are a lot of levels of frustration here because, and I know you don't, sometimes, I shouldn't say you, some people don't like to hear this. This was an instance, though, where LeBron did play really well and was like the one of the only Lakers. Rui played r- relatively well as well. But LeBron had 31 and 13 assists on just 16 shots. And so how do the Lakers get, you know, have a 50-point negative turnaround from their biggest lead to their biggest deficit? Well, just weird stuff, man. So the rotations would be this. The starting five built a 12-point lead in the first five minutes of the game and then never played again until the start of the second half. That's odd. The, I'm not acting like I even think Cam Reddish should be a major part of the rotation. But two days ago, Cam Reddish is fit, or two games ago, is finishing the Nuggets game. In this, today, he gets a DNP coach's decision. I So that's the coaching piece of it. Then there is the weirder Anthony Davis piece of it. And Anthony Davis, I think, has been, uh, you know, a whipping post when he shouldn't be at times. But AD struggles with these European centers Mm. needs to be investigated. He has lost 16 consecutive games to Sabonis and Jokic. 16 well, Jokic games is just better. Oh, but I get it, but not but to win seven to where the seven straight against Jokic last two years, never beaten Sabonis. And I think it speaks to Brew. AD's never really wanted to play center. He's been kind of forced into yeah. it. And those two centers in particular want to body you, want to lean into you, and AD doesn't do well with it. It's not an excuse. Yeah. It's it's infuriating, actually. But the reason I think it's such a big deal is because you can't be the 9 or the 10. You can be the 7 or the 8. Mm. You can't be the 9 or the 10. And now Sacramento essentially brew as a five-game lead on them because they're up four losses and they have swept the season series up to this point. Even the Lakers winning a couple games, it probably won't matter. So this is a big loss. This is a big, bad loss. I agree with you on the loss. But let me say this about LeBron's injury. And this is why I think it's just a little bit of a concern. And obviously, I didn't even see a limp when he was walking, you know. He had to leave the floor. It was almost an emergency. But let me say this. Since the start of January, or this calendar year, 2024, he is essentially every four or five games he's had to take off Mm -hmm. a game. He had just played seven straight, but that was after missing two games straight and the All-Star break. So I know he played 14 minutes in the All-Star game. But my point is, this is concerning because is he going to be able to hold up for a playoff run? Right, where you're at times playing every other day, and obviously it's more intense. The the opponents are more intense. You're more intense. There's a mental strain that's not there in the regular season. And if he has to miss a game here or there, and even if he doesn't miss a game here or there, 
is he able to play at the level? You know, he might be hurting, but say I'm going to play because it's the playoffs. That's what he did is last he year. able to play at the level that they need him to play at to really win a series? So I think it, it's a bit of a concern. It's just something you need to watch. But I'm with you. The loss was bigger. And last year, last yesterday, I downplayed the importance of this game. I've changed my tune. Oh, you did because I, I think three minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, you also made fun of us at the start of the show. No, well, uh, yeah. Well, here's what I'm, here's what I'm gonna say. But here's what I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little teeth to it. Oh. This is a bad matchup for the Lakers. All right, just oh. like the Lakers are a bad matchup for OKC, they are a bad matchup for the Lakers. They've beaten them down. We know this because we talked about it yesterday. Seven of the last eight games, and I'm gonna give you uh, what I believe is some of the reasons for AD struggle. Of, oh, but number, sorry. well, number one, why they struggle against the Kings, and AD is yeah. a part of this. They can't – I mean, De'Aaron Fox is arguably the fastest guy in the league. They can't guard the point of attack. They can't yeah. even – and we know nobody can really stop Fox. Yeah. But they can't even keep him in front of them a little bit. Correct. Austin Reeves tries. He's not fast no. enough. D'Angelo Russell is just a bad defender. Yep. So, De'Aaron Fox has his way. No, he had they missed Vanderbilt yesterday. In, this, in this matchup. They miss Vanderbilt. Right. And Cam Reddish, <laughs> as, we, as mediocre as he is – Maybe you give him a shot. Can you at least just stop him a little bit? Can you, know, you text that to Darvin? down a tad bit. I, I will text that to Darvin. <laughs> Please. But, but Fox averages 36 points a game this season against the Lakers. Mm. That's the most against any team in the league that he's played more than once. All right, so he has his way. Now, what happens when he has his way? All right? And he's getting to the lane whenever he wants because he's the second, as far as guards, second in the league in points in the paint. So when he gets into the lane, AD has to either help and then that leaves Sabonis open for, if not a basket, and a, a, a rebound. Yeah. And Sabonis averages 17 rebounds against uh, the Lakers. And so you see these are AD's numbers. Not only do you see the rebounds of Sabonis, this is head-to-head -head this season. They're 0-3, obviously, 0-9 career against Sabonis. But, Nick, even if, like, you see, look at, we don't have AD's fouls on there. I have put that on there. Okay, AD fouls four and a half times a game, 4.3 fouls a game against the Kings. That's the most against also, any team and, in the league. And that got him that's out of their what, rotation the yesterday. Right. Yeah. So when 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 Fox breaks down your defense or Monk or whoever, and AD has to come off his man and help, he may foul. If he doesn't foul, Sabonis is open for a bucket, a layup, a rebound, whatever it is. And so this is a tough matchup for the Lakers. And so this is a team that that could beat them if they, especially if you have to play them in a play-in. Well, that's right. really the only that place would really they would scared, play right, them. And unless would, they got deep. And, right. that, and that would be a tough – and you'd probably be in Sacramento. And to the point you made a couple days ago – They're bad on the road. Lakers are bad on the road yep. against everybody. Well, they've got the Bucks tomorrow, so. Well, that, Oh, that's the other thing. It's, it's the Bucks, then the Timberwolves, and they have the issue with Towns now, and then the Kings again. This is a rough – No, it's a tough – right. It's a tough stretch. Absolutely. And for a game that they – it's one thing if you come out sleepwalking. You shouldn't ever in a game this, this big, if you win. will – Exactly, but to to have it flip like that, it's today's where it was, NBA is so crazy. Yeah. That's the thing with the threes. I mean, you see Lee's like yeah. just vanish all sure. vanish all Especially the time. Especially when Darvin Ham is coaching. I, I was surprised. Um, I understand some reasons for it, but I was surprised because Milwaukee's been playing well, won six straight, and their defense has been good. Like Doc has helped the defense since the end of January. They've been like the fourth best defense in the league. Yesterday, I know he said he thought they were all right defensively. They gave up like 57% shooting, and they, uh, Golden State hit a ton of threes. And that's why I understand. But let me get to why I'm surprised. Uh, Giannis was back, all right? And they had just come off a big win without Giannis. And you would expect that things would have went well with Giannis and Dame. And, and so I was surprised by that. What doesn't surprise me is that what Doc has done with their defense is what he should have done. They're so big. Now they're slow. They're big and slow. So what he's done is had Lopez and Giannis protect the rim again like they were like under Bulldozer, mm -hmm. and it's been great. But if you're playing a team that can shoot and they get hot, they're always going to be hot. But if they're hot and Golden State was hot last night, then yeah. that's when something like this can happen. So kind of yes and no. Yeah, so listen, I – I was shocked. Uh, I'm higher on Milwaukee than, you know, most folks, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. And the fact that I thought they were going to have the emotional boost of 
we were looking at it as, you know, how much time is Giannis going to miss? He's going to miss time. How much? fact that he didn't miss any additional games, that piece of it. Now, I am not going to extrapolate this to the levels that I think some will, which is people really want to believe in Golden State. Yeah. People yeah. really want to. Yeah. It, it's, and I think part of it is because people like Steph. Part of it is because it feels familiar. Part of it is because people actually do like dynasties and they want to keep them going. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and so I think they are trying to speak into existence a more dangerous I Warriors agree. team than actually exists. Despite last night, they looked great. And by the way, if you want to do that, just wait a week because the Warriors are about to be on a winning streak. Because I don't, they have the opposite thing the Lakers have going on, which is their next three games are the the Bulls, the Spurs, the Spurs. So you, all you could you know beat Milwaukee, you then have these three games all of a sudden. And they've and, been playing other than the fifty point blowout. Yes. Prior to that, they had been yeah. playing well, and that also not to tie it totally back to the Lakers, but it matters in this row. The Warriors are the nine, Lakers are the ten. Lakers about to have that tough stretch. Warriors yeah. about to have this easy stretch. We've already talked about the Kings being uh, up ahead of them. You're running out of teams. You're likely to jump. Yeah. If you're the Lakers. Yeah. And so I, I am surprised by it. It also doesn't change for me while it's my long term belief on the Warriors. That you do not believe in. That I don't, I don't think they can get out of round one. I know oh, you, yeah, you're a little extreme. higher than. I would love to see. I'm like what yeah. you said before. Like, because I also, and one reason you didn't bring up, it would resurrect the Magic versus Steph debate if they could win a championship. Oh, sure. <laughs> but they, they, they can't. Yeah, Drew, they let can. me get your take on this sure. play that kind of jumped out. It's Clay catching his 12th dunk of the year. And everyone is uh, very happy and surprised. Now, it wasn't that Surprise accurate. Surprise and you Kind of. It's his 12th of the year. He had 10 last night. In his last three games, he had 10, uh, 6, and 14. How far do you think, like, are we happy with this? Or are we like, oh, good for Clay. He had 10. I just want Clay to no, old Clay. Well, he had feels 10 like, in the first play. half, I believe. I think he had 10 at halftime. Mm -hmm. um, look, he's coming off the bench now. And bench players for the most part, are going to fluctuate. Sometimes you're going to be hot. Sometimes you're not going to be able to get it going. So as long as his attitude is right, and again, they're not a contender. I don't even think they're a contender. Yeah. To win the West, they're not a contender. Could they maybe be a spoiler for a round? Yeah. I'll give them that. Okay. I do think Clay's attitude is probably shortly going to improve because it's about to get warm enough in the Bay for him to spend even more time on that boat. I saw him on the we boat. We saw it yesterday. Yeah. Man, that's good for everybody. I time that. on the open water, the fresh air. Clay loves mm -hmm. it. I feel like he's going to feel good he's going to be back in his groove a bit. Splash Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, good. Oh, thanks. Meanwhile, <laughs> the Bucks had nine points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. That's right, nine. Team overall scored 90 uh, all game. So here's Doc on this offense. Uh, that's not shocking at all. You had nine points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I agree with that. He shot 17%. Well, the offense was bad, but the defense was bad, too. But they had 90 points. Yeah, Today's not, NBA, that's like smart. They gave up 48% shooting from three. Bro, they had nine points. And no, the <laughs> offense was, by any it was all two. bad. Okay. Okay. They all gave right. up 125 points. I know, but he's acting like it's right. going to blow your I mind. Think in, it was today's, all bad. in today's NBA, That's, scoring 90 is worse than allowing 125. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, it, it's it, like scoring 50 in right. the 90s. I mean, the, it's, right. the, it's bad. Right. So are the Bucks over, under, or perfectly rated? Well, listen, I, right now they have the fourth best title odds, and they have worse title odds than the Clippers. That is underrated. And I listen. No disrespect to your beloved Clippers, bro. Maybe, but Sounds if the if I were ranking contenders, Denver right now should be the favorites. They're not. Boston is, but Denver should. They're be. not even ahead of uh, top Knicks tiers. I, I understand that. I I, I will. There's you again the committees, the committees here and all of it, mm -hmm. and I think that the East is far harder to get through for Boston, Milwaukee, Miami, because I think the East has three true viable contenders to win the conference, plus whatever you think Philly is pending and beats help. I think the West has Denver and then a bunch of teams hoping a different team beats Denver so they can That's then right. beat that team. Like and so the so I think the I, I think the Bucks the Bucks are, let me put it like this. The only team that I think if Denver is at full strength has a better than puncher's chance of beating them. Because I think uh, I think the Bucks, Giannis Jokic, 
Dame Murray, and then let the rest play out. I think you can say, listen, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to disrespect Denver, but I think it's disrespectful to Milwaukee to act like that Giannis can't be the better player for two weeks. Of mm. course he could. Yeah. And I know it's not just the best right. player, but so much. No, I hear you. So I, I think they are right now a touch underrated, Brew. Believe it or not, I agree with you in that I would flip them in the uh, Clippers. Clippers. Oh. The Clippers have been upsetting me. And last night they, they came back and beat. Your, your Rockets. Yeah. But they look bad for a lot of that game. Um, and the Clippers, you know, James Harden, there's a question there. So I, I, I think Boston, I agree, Denver, Boston, Milwaukee. It should be that, that okay. order. So Milwaukee, uh, yeah, they should be numbered. And they are a tad underrated. Look, when Dame and Giannis both play, their record of percentage, right, they win over 70% of their games, that would be like the second best record in the league. Yep. So, yeah, they should, uh, they should be a tad from, bit higher. From Josh, uh, they're 16-15 on the road this year. Last year, they were 26-15 and 15 on the road. They've got nine more road games, and only the Wizards are not in the playoffs. So, we'll pencil in well, the Wizards win. But everything else, like, all of a sudden, like, oh, are we below 500 on the road? Can I – but I think comparing this year's Milwaukee team to last year's Milwaukee team on full season stats is going to be a bit of a fool's errand. Because last year's team had the continuity. It was yep. the championship core. They, they had the same coach. They had all of it. They, I, they made this trade, I think, knowing and changed coaches twice now. So they obviously didn't anticipate doing that part of it. But saying it might be a work in progress early, but we hope to be better late. So it's yep. not surprising to me that Milwaukee was better at a lot of stuff over the with the last breadth year. of last season. It's question is how they're going to be at the end. Okay. And Middleton's uh, been out, too. Yeah. Uh, finally, bad news out of Minnesota. Cat has a torn meniscus out indefinitely. Wolves are tied with OKC for the top spot in the West, but tough one here. Cat averaging 22 and 8. Brew your reaction. Well, look, man, I, I just hope he's back. Um, it's really unfortunate. I, I don't think they would have won the West with him, or, or hopefully he's back, and I don't think they will win the West with him. But I think they would be dangerous. I think they – they're the best defensive team in the league. Mm -hmm. He can score inside, and he's a great three-point shooter, 42 percent from three. Um, I, it's just unfortunate, and I think if he's out, it just opens things up even more for those teams below Denver. Of course. Because I think they were I, – I think – and they also – I'm not saying they would beat Denver, but they're one of the teams that – you mentioned Milwaukee – that has the size to at least – Bother Jokic a little bit with Gobert Maybe. and Cat. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate. Yeah, but if he's out, then you, we know exactly what Minnesota is. The Jazz? Utah 2.0. Yeah. Rudy Gobert, a scoring wing, and we know what that turns and those into teams, in the But those teams got, you know. Or the one seed and lost. Deep. Yeah, but they, they, didn't no. they get to the conference no, finals? No, they got to the second round. They, second round? They, if, no, they never got to the conference finals. I'm almost certain of that. We can. Well, they lost that. to the Clippers. I think the, they lost the second they round. They lost but, the second yeah. round. The, listen, I just think that we know what the, it, I I feel we know what a team in the playoffs will look like if one of your top two guys is Gobert. The idea for the the Thunder, the Timberwolves, that was interesting is you're going to have such a different roles because you have Carl and Rudy and then you have Anthony in, in the place of uh, Donovan Mitchell. So it would be – if he's out, they're done. Yeah. If he, I, I, I don't think know if anyone at this table fully believes in them, even if he's in. Mm -hmm. But if he's out, Not they're – Not as a team that could win the right, West. Which is a weird but. thing to say about the one seed or the potential one seed, but that's where we're at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Bill's Super Bowl window closing – it's next on FS1, the Fox Sports Channel on Sirius XM. It's great. If you're in your car, listening. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.